get a red book and turn to page 
That old song never grow old. You know that sounds pretty good when you sit here kissing my little bit of lips. Love the Lord tonight. So I'm going to be ready for it. Amen. Who else has a song or testimony tonight? I want to thank the Lord for being here for everything he does for me. And we all remember Mama on the drive. He's already prayed. So she uh, fell in between her bathtub and a, a built-in shelf, and she dislocated her shoulder and had to go to sleep and set it back. She has to go to the surgeon Friday. Said that like they surgery. You know, I've had that done on it. Painful. Just for me. And she's 72 years old. Pray the Lord just let her be better. Right. We did what we had to do. You know, it's that song never grow. That was my mom's favorite song. I could see her sitting in a rocking chair, singing in the church we went to. I can just imagine being just the Lord. Good. That was good, wasn't it? Amen. 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 Amen
especially. You keep letting your light shine, Amen. sweetheart. Amen. I'm proud of these kids. Who else? Song or testimony on your heart tonight for the Lord? His name is the name of matters, right? <coughs> His way is the way that matters. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Amen. God's been good to me. I better not deserve. How about you? Amen. Amen. You may deserve the blessings that God has given you. I don't. I don't. And, uh, I know where. I know where I could have been. And uh, I like to think about it. I like to think about where I could have been if I had to turn my life over to Jesus. But I got to have been in for the grace of God. I know where I've been. But thank God for His marvelous grace. Amen. It sure is good to be in His house. It's good Amen. to be part of His kingdom. It's good to be. Uh, I like. I like. I like saying I'm saved. Don't you? Once a while, the, the devil just needs to hear that. He needs to know that we know where we're at, who we are because of Christ. And so uh, we're, we're, we're saved. I appreciate the blood tonight. Appreciate the blood. Had a good day today. Uh, just a real good day. God's been good to me. 
and uh, excited about what he's going to do for each of us. You know, God's, God's got a plan for your life. Did you know that? Amen. He's got a plan for your life. His plans are good. Plans of, of blessing, plans of, of goodness and, and mercy and grace. But uh, we have to just jump into his plan. Tell the Lord, uh, you know, tell the flesh that uh, we're going we're gonna to follow God. We're going to follow God. And the flesh ain't going to like that too good. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. I'm glad there's a there's a spiritual side of man. There's a, there's a flesh that we live in. But uh, if we'll feed the spirit more than the flesh, the spirit will have control of our of our life. And I want to I want to look if you if you'll turn with me just for a few minutes tonight in Psalm 108, Psalm 108, and uh, there's something to say about determination. I've never accomplished much in this life. But I wasn't determined to finish what I started. How about you? Uh, sometimes I had to get help to finish what I started. But uh, and, uh, I might give you an illustration of that here in a little bit. But Psalm 108, and beginning at verse number 1. And uh, you pray for us for a few minutes. Tonight. David said, Oh God, my heart is fixed. It's fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Awake, psalter in heart, I myself will awake early. I'll praise thee, O Lord, among the people. And I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. Brother Jimmy, let us in prayer, would you please? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. We pray that, dear Lord, you uh, come into Dwayne and give him strength, help him have the message for us that we need, and help us get blessed from it, dear Lord. Help us take it and apply it, and yes. always let us, dear Lord, understand what you'd have us to do for you, dear Lord. Get ourselves out of the way, and dear Lord, we thank you for it all. In God's sweet name we pray. Amen. Yes, Jesus. I believe, I believe David was saying, I'm just a nobody. Telling about telling everybody about the one to save my soul. Amen. He said, Oh God, my heart is fixed. It's fixed. Uh, I'm glad I got things fixed up with God. How about you? Because to be real honest about it, whether we wanted to admit it or not, we were of the devil when we were lost. Amen. We were of our father, the devil. And I'm glad I switched fathers. I'm glad I've got a new father, a father that loves me, a father of goodness and of mercy and of, and of salvation. David said, my heart, oh God, my heart is fixed. That means stationary and unmovable, determined. And as I said already, I've never accomplished a whole lot when I wasn't really determined. I uh, had to put up I was a starter on my old truck the other day and getting it unbolted was simple, getting it, finding a hole that it would fit out of to get it out, out from, the, from, the, uh, from under the truck was the hard part. I turned it every which way and wiggled and finally found a place to get it out. I was determined. And once I knew that place of it, it went in well. About the time we got it done, I skin all over it, greasy all over it. My son called said, Dad, my, my forerunner won't start. And I said, well, I said, I got experience in changing out starters. If that's what it is, we'll work on it. <coughs> so last night I worked on it, and I got the bolts out finally. And I've been upside down, inside out, up, down, this way, that way. And I finally determined there ain't no hole for that thing to come out. That must have been the first thing that they put in. And uh, I, I believe if you break your break your arm in three places, you could get to it all. But so, uh, but I'm determined to get it fixed. So uh, to Louise, I said I'm gonna call Junior and uh, take if I can get it bolted back up and take this thing to him. 
I, I was determined, but I couldn't get it out. I just couldn't find a way to do it. Well, God has got a way for us to live for him. There'll be a lot of people tell you, I would, but I just can't. Well, it's not true. There is a way. Amen. May, they may not be the, be the way to get that starter out of that forerunner without taking a bunch of stuff apart. I don't know, but but God has made a way for us. He, he has made a way for us to live for him. We have no excuse if we don't live for God. The only, the only thing I can say is because we're not determined enough. Our heart is not fixed. If our heart is fixed, we can live for God. Is that right? Amen. And David's heart was so fixed, he said, I'm going to sing and give praises with my glory. He tells the psaltery in the heart, wake up, wake up. And he tells himself, wake up early. And he said, I'll praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I'll sing praise unto thee among the nations. When you continue reading on in this chapter, you're going to find how David continually continues on giving praise and glory to God. But it all starts with a fixed heart, a heart that's determined, a heart that's made up its mind that it's going to live for God. Now, question is tonight, do we have a fixed heart? Uh, maybe folks uh, that are here tonight, maybe maybe you've been in and out, and in and out, and in and out. You can stay in if you want to. You can live for God if you want to. You'll have to. You'll have to be determined. You'll take. It'll take. Uh, when the tr next trial comes your way, you'll just have to say, "I'm living for God." When the next trouble comes your way, you're just going to say, "I'm going to continue on living for God." That's what it's going to take. The, uh, it's going to take determination. It's going to take folks who have their mind made up and their eyes on the prize. Amen. If we're going to make it. Now, when I thought about this scripture, I thought about old David. And, and you know, we look at David and we say, well, look how good God was to him. Well, God's been just as good to us as he has to anybody. You'll not find, I don't think you'll find anybody in the Bible that God has been better to them than he has to me. And you can probably say the same thing tonight. There's no, it wasn't. He wasn't no better to Moses than he was to you. He wasn't no better to Elijah than he, than he has been to you. He, he wasn't no better to David than he has been to you. But these men had a determination in their heart and their minds were made up that their heart was fixed and they were going to live for God. If you look at David's life, and I thought about this, I thought about just a, just a few things about David that that made it to where he could say, my heart is fixed. It's, it's, it's fixed on God. And the first thing I thought of when I, when I thought about this was how David was accepted by God. He was accepted by God. When you read it in the, in the book of, of, of Samuel, you'll find out that old Saul, old King Saul was the, was the king and, and he had disobeyed God. He didn't have a fixed heart, you see. And so he disobeyed God, and God had taken away his kingship. Yeah. And now God is sending Samuel to Jesse's house to, 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 to pick out a new king. And so Jesse, oh Jesse, he brings the biggest, strongest, best-looking boy he's got, brings him before Samuel. His oldest son, alive, and he says, and he brings him before, before uh, Samuel, and he looks at his strength, and he looks at his stature, and he looks, I'm sure he was the most powerful son. He was the oldest. He'd worked the hardest. Probably had big old arms and all this, but, but Samuel said, this is not the one. This is not him. And so then he brings the next son along the way, old Benadab, he brings him. Well, surely he may not be as, as strong as, uh, as alive. He may not be as stout as him. He may not be as powerful yet as him, but, but surely this must be the one that you're looking for, Samuel. And it wasn't the one either. He goes through seven 
sons. And none of them were the one that God wanted. None of them. He said, he, and he, as a matter of fact, he, he talks about, you're, you're looking on the outside. But God, he looks on the inside, don't he? Amen. I ain't you glad for that? Amen. And so he said, don't you have another son? And maybe as an actor, he hadn't even thought about the other son. It's got to be one of these here at the house. Surely he don't want that little ruddy, a young boy back there uh, herding sheep. Surely he don't want him. Surely that's not the one that Samuel has is looking for. Listen, Samuel was looking for the one that God was looking for. Amen. And so, so he says, well, we won't sit down. Go fetch him. Bring him here. We won't even sit down until you bring him here. And as soon as he comes in, he's ruddy and, and, and good to look upon. The Bible says he's a, a cute little feller, I, I, I guess. But Samuel says this is the one. And so David understood what it was like to be accepted by God. How many of you here tonight felt like you were a failure in life? Amen. Well, I was. How many in here tonight felt like if, if somebody was choosing sides, you'd been the last one picked? That's the way I felt about it. And when God reached down and accepted me into his kingdom, I want you to know something tonight. It does something in my heart to give me a determination. If God would reach down to me with all these others that are sitting around that looks, looks better and they're more talented and they're, and they're stronger and they're more powerful, if God will reach down to me, amen, it give me a determination in my heart that I was going to live for God. How about you? Amen. If you realize where God picks you up from, you'll want to live for it. If you, uh, amen. Uh, we, we, I wasn't in the house. I was in the backfield. I was back there where they kept the, the youngest of the youngest. The, the, uh, the, the, it was the lowest job you could have. That's the way I felt about myself. But thank God that Jesus loves, amen, those that are back in the back 40 just as much as he does the ones that are up close and in the house. Amen. amen. So he was accepted of God. And then he was anointed of God. I want you to think about this. And when you read the scripture, when you go back to the to the uh, uh, the time when 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 Samuel was sent to to anoint uh, Saul, it says that he took a vial of oil, a vial of oil. This is back in chapter ten, and he anointed the the head of Saul. But then you find out when he sees David, he says he pours a horn. In verse 13, and Samuel take, I took the horn of all and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Rome. So, so he takes, when, when old Saul is anointed, he pours a little vial of oil on him. But when David is anointed, he takes a horn of oil. The horns that they used at the time were, were uh, some of them this big around, maybe this long. And so, so when he pours it on David, it runs down his face and down off his chin and down off his clothes. And I believe God was saying at this time, he ought, see, God already knew that old, old Saul was going to reject him. He knew Saul was going to be disobedient, but he knew that David was a man after God's own heart. So I want to say this tonight. If God has blessed you and anointed you with the oil of gladness, if he's anointed you with his spirit, praise God, it'll make your heart get fixed on God. Amen. Sometimes we don't, sometimes we're scared to death to just rear back and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we're scared to death. To just rear back and, and, and let the shouts flow. Amen. Sometimes we're scared. Most of the time we're scared to death. To just praise God the way he deserves to be praised. But I want to tell you about a man named David. He didn't care who was looking. He didn't care what they thought about it. I, re I remember a time when he danced before the Lord with all his might. 
He danced Plumalvi's ephod, amen. And, 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 and his wife looked at him and said, Oh, boy, you're, you're, look how foolish you look. Look how, uh, look how you just embarrassed yourself in, in front of your maids and handmaids. And he said, I want to tell you something. This was, this was old Saul's daughter that he was married to. He said, he said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to praise the Lord in my own words. I'm going to praise the Lord till, uh, until I embarrass myself. Amen. And I'm, I want to say this today. If we just turn loose and praise the Lord and forget who was looking around us, amen, we, we feel a little better about ourselves every day. God's good, ain't he? Amen. David, thanks for the Lord with all his might. I want you to know something. Before David ever slew the giant, he was anointed by God. Ain't that right? Amen. If you if you're gonna face some in this life, you're gonna face some giants in this life. I face a I face a few. Amen. I've 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 had them looking at me on Sunday morning, they, looking back at me like, boy, I'll come over there and I'll knock you, I'll knock you out or something. But you know what? Hey, they better be careful. They better they better not do it when I feel the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. Somebody said. Are you, Somebody said, what if an old rattlesnake crawled into church? I said, well, when I feel the power of God, I believe I can pick him up and snap his head off. Amen? But you know what? You better make sure God's in it before you do something like that. I believe this today. My God has, has been good to me. My God has, has, has given, he's given us the anointing of the Spirit of God. And if we'll just take that on, we won't be ashamed to wave our hands and say, Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. Amen? Amen. It'll keep you strong. It'll keep you, it'll keep, that anointing will keep you coming back to church, won't it? Amen. It'll keep you praising him. David said, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. In front of the nations. I'll, I'll praise him in front of everybody. He didn't care what anybody thought about it. God had been so good to him that he, he was a he was a, he was a he was a praising fool, old David was, wasn't he? He would praise the Lord at any time. And we should be doing the same thing. Because God has sent us the same anointing that he sent David, if we'll have it. If our heart is fixed. Next, please. Nextly, David knew he'd been blessed. You know why David spent so much time blessing the Lord? You know why he spent so much time uh, in his psalms going, bless the Lord, bless... You, you, you can read through that and it's just over. And I don't know, I forget. I counted up one time how many times he blessed the Lord through the psalms. It was just amazing how many it was. And you know what? Uh, uh, you, you know why he done that? You know why he kept blessing the Lord? Because the Lord had blessed him. Amen. And if the Lord keeps blessing you, you'll keep blessing Him. Amen. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes He'll bless and bless and bless. But we don't bless Him back. So He might, He might quit blessing if we ain't careful. I believe I'll, I believe I'll praise Him a little bit when He does something good for me. I believe I'll honor Him when He does something good for me. Because hey, tomorrow I might want another blessing. How about you? Amen. We'll sit around looking like a, look like an old. Uh, uh, like we've been eating persimmons and, 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 and then wonder why God ain't blessing us. We ain't praised him for the last hundred thousand blessings he gave us. Amen. How about that? We ain't praised him for all the other things that he's done for us. For how he brought us out from the fields. How he brought us out of, of, of sin. How he saved our wretched souls. How he set our feet on a solid rock. How good he's been to us. Amen. Listen, God done something for me today. Amen. He gave me a, it is a, is a, I, I start to say a double portion. I believe it was a quadruple portion of his blessings today. All I could do was sit and cry. And I kept thinking, boy, I can't wait to get to church tonight and just thank the Lord for being so good to me. And if you'll, if you'll admit it, he's blessed you too. Amen. Amen. He's been good to all of us. Been good to all of us. Amen. So David knew he's blessed. You think David had been able to kill that giant if he wasn't one of the blessed of God? You think David would have been able to kill that giant if he wasn't one of the anointed of God? 
You think David could have killed that giant if he wasn't one of the accepted of God? And you're you've been accepted too if you'll have it. You you've been anointed too if you'll have it, and you've been blessed too if you'll have it. So praise God if He's been that good to to you. You got something to praise Him for tonight. Amen. 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 You ain't gonna take a running spell, are you? I can tell. You. <laughs> David was blessed. He was blessed. How many? How many? How many's got? How many got saved? How many been saved? How many's born, a born again believer? You're, you're born, you've been born again. You've been saved. Then you're blessed. You ain't got to go to hell. That's good. That's you ain't got to burn in a lake of fire. That's good. You ain't going to die one day and spend eternity begging for a drop of water, begging for, for just something to, to quench your uh, thirst, something to, uh, to quench the fire. You're not going to have to spend eternity railing and, 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 and wailing and, and having gnashing of teeth. You're not going to have to spend a, a eternity wishing that you could go back and have one more opportunity. You've been born again, amen. And while those that have not accepted Christ are burning in, in a lake of fire and burning in hell for Forever, we're going to be rejoicing in glory, amen. We're going to be running down the streets of gold. We're going to be shouting down by the river of, of life. We're going to be bowed at the feet of a Savior who come down and gave us life. We're going to be kissing his precious feet, his precious nail-scarred feet, and his precious nail-scarred hands. We've been blessed. We've been blessed. We're blessed tonight. Amen. Amen. If I pulled you out of a burning house, you'd, you'd, you'd call me every day and thank me for it. Jesus has, has pulled us from a burning lake of fire. Amen. amen. And half the time we forget to even say thank you. Amen. He's been good to us. We are blessed. Amen. amen. Blessed. Blessed. God done something for me today that no man could do. No man, 10 men could have done it. But God done it. Oh, I, I, I tell you what, I feel so blessed tonight. All I can do is just cry and rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Ain't he been good to us? Amen. Ain't he been good to us? Amen. I tell you what, your heart needs to be fixed. Amen. Your heart needs to be strong. Your heart needs to be be, be steadfast and unmovable. If you're lost today, you need to you need to get fixed, amen. amen. But you know, our heart needs to be fixed on God. Yeah. And thirdly, thirdly, I'm gonna give you one more thing. I'm, I'm gonna close tonight. I'm gonna give you this. And not only we've been accepted and anointed and blessed, we've also we've been we've been we've been changed. You don't know what I was, but I do. Amen. You don't know who I was, but I do. Amen. You don't know what kind of man I was. I do. And the devil does. And every now and again, every now and again, he reminds me. He reminds me of where I went. He reminds me of the things I've done. I, I've got down to pray. And the old devil whispered in my ear, Boy, if they knew everywhere you'd ever been, if they knew everything that you'd ever done, if they knew, oh, I'll bring somebody in here one of these days and tell them what kind of man you used to be. And I'm, you know what? The devil will whisper in my ear, and I'll be thinking for a second, well, maybe they will, maybe they will. But then I looked at God, and I said, God, what do you think about it? God said, I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't even know what he's talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. Praise God. That man is dead. That man is gone. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus. And as far as I'm concerned, you're as clean as clean can be. You know what that makes me want to do? Keep on living for God. You know what? If they ever do, if they ever come up and say, wait a minute, I'm going to tell you what 
kind of man your, your old preacher used to be. I'm going to say, come on. Come on up and tell it off, y'all two. And now I'm going to tell you what kind of man God wants you to be. God can save you, you old dirty rascal yourself. Hey, man, God is good. He's been good to us. He's been good to us. He's been good to us. They used to say, oh, so-and-so made a change. You know, they'd see, they'd see different. They'd throw, their, they'd throw their liquor bottle away. Amen. Cork and all. Amen. Throw it away. I went. I used to go preacher Slater. We'd go way, way back over toward the, uh, way back in Hawkins County, way back in the mountains. And there's an old fellow over there, an old, uh, old black fellow, and I forget his first name. But George, old George Slater said, I've been coming to see him for 50 years, 50 years. He said, Brother Steele, will you take me back over there? I said, well, I sure will. We went up, and he's living in a little, little old shack way back in the mountains. It didn't have no electricity, no indoor plumbing, nothing like that, and, 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 and beer cans. You can walk in the yard for the beer cans. They was everywhere, under the house, in the house. Uh, on the couch, everywhere you went, and we sat there and talked to that man, treat him like a king. You know why? Because his soul is precious as anybody else's, right? We'd go talk to him, and, and, and he'd say, well, don't leave without praying. And we'd pray, but you know what? It wasn't too long before Brother Slaven died. He said, come on, Brother Steele. He said, I heard some good news. He said, I want to go see my old buddy once again. And we, we piled that old truck. We headed back in the mountains, and we walked up, pulled in the driveway, walked up. Still didn't have no electricity. Still didn't have no bathroom in the house. But there wasn't a beer can in the yard. There wasn't a beer can under the house. There wasn't a beer can on the porch. There wasn't a beer can in the living room. He said, praise God, brothers. I got born again. I got born again. Ain't you glad for what God can make a change in your life? Amen. He had been trying to quit that old stuff for, for 50 years. He couldn't do it. The fact of the matter is, when they say, oh, so-and-so made a change, if God didn't make the change, it'll, it'll change right back. Ain't that right? But God changes your heart, and if, and if God does that for you, I promise you, you'll want to live Amen. for Him. Yeah. you want to live for Him. Amen. And let me give you one more little thing. I said one more while ago. He also challenges us. You're, you're going to face challenges in this life. Do you know that? Amen. You're going to face challenges. Some of them going to be big. How many face these big challenges? Amen. I was facing a big challenge early this morning. At 9.30, me and Jamie was praying. We was, we was, there's a big challenge in our, in our life. We was praying. At 10 30, we was praising. You know why? Because that big challenge come along and a bigger God come along. A bigger God. A God that was bigger made that challenge look like it was nothing but a little away. Amen. Made that challenge look like a grain of sand. You know why? Because God is bigger than anything we're going to face. Everybody else, when David looked across the yonder and seen that giant old Goliath, and, uh, a nine and a half feet tall, uh, 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 shoulders no doubt that big, and, it, and was was had God, had God's people scared to death. You know what David saw? He didn't see a big old giant. He saw a big old God. Amen. He saw a big old God. And when he went to that giant, he went for one reason. Because he knew that the God of Israel, the God that he served, was bigger than that old giant. Amen. And when you face challenges, and you realize that there's a bigger God than there is a challenge, praise God, your heart will get fixed on there's a lot of them I don't want to face by myself. How about you? There's a lot of them I don't want to face by myself. But thank God, since I've been born again, I ain't had to. I ain't had to. See, it's kind of play something on the piano, something pretty and slow. The 
Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Your heart ain't fixed. Maybe it ain't. Maybe it ain't determined. Maybe, maybe, maybe you tried, but I want to say this. I want to say this. You're gonna to have to just. You're gonna just have to give it all to God yeah. and say, God, you're the best thing I know, and I'm not going. To, I'm not going to turn loose. David made mistakes. You're going to as well. He made some. He made some whoppers, didn't he? I mean, he he made some whoppers. But you know what? He, he knew that he had a God that loved him and he went back and repented. He back, went back and repented and put his trust back in God. That's what you need to do. And I want to say this. You need, if your heart ain't fixed, you're not going to make it. This, this old, this old junk, all you got to do is make a little profession of faith. You'll never have to worry about nothing else. Listen, this is a day by day walk with God. You better get up in the morning and you better have a fixed heart. When you go to bed at night, you better have a fixed heart. When you, when you face things on the job, when you face problems at home, you better have a fixed heart. Because God, it's going to take God to get you through. Man. It's going to take God to get you through. We're going to turn the cameras off and if you need to come and pray, maybe you're not as determined as y'all be, you better come.